Welcome to this video where we are going on a journey together to understand the concept of Einstein's special theory of relativity and time dilation. I have always been intrigued by the fact that how a person who is sitting in a high speed moving train experiences time to be passing slower or in other words how is it possible that this person is aging slower compared to the person who is observing him from the railway station. I realized that this is happening because speed of light remains constant under all circumstances. So let us see how this happens. But before that, I want to give you a small problem to solve. This problem will make it easier for you to understand how the magic happens. Suppose the library is 2 km away from the station and the supermarket is 4 km away from the station. Now A and B, two persons A and B are both standing on the station. They are to leave the station at the same time. A will go to the library and come back and B will go to the supermarket and come back. There is however a condition. Speed of both A and B should be same say 2 km per hour. The question is who will return station earlier? Uh, so the answer is A will reach the station earlier and B will come to the station late. It is very simple. With the same speed if A needs to travel less distance then A also takes less time. In this case if we calculate we can find that A's time is 2 hours and B takes 4 hours and therefore B takes more time. Okay, now let us move on to the next uh, case where we have this, the same two persons A and B but this time A is inside a train compartment, B is standing on the railway platform. Both of them are witnessing a beam of light released from A's hand which hits the roof of the train and comes back. The beam of light takes some time to touch the roof of the train and come back and for both A and B this time is same. In other words TA is equal to TB. The problem arises when the train starts to move at a very high speed. In this case it is of course a uniform speed. We are considering to not make it too complicated for us. As the train moves a continues to witness the beam of light going up and down in a straight vertical line but B witnesses the same beam of light in a different way. Unlike A, B no longer sees the same beam of light going up and down in a vertical manner but B sees the line as the sides of a triangle due to the motion of the train because for A the beam of light travels straight up and down but for B the beam of light travels diagonally and so it traverses longer distance as you can see this distance is more than this distance. Interesting thing to observe here is speed of light for both A and B is same. You may ask how? Well, this was established by famous Michelson-Morley experiment. We can discuss that experiment another time. But for now, just know that speed of light never changes for the observers in different frames of references. And so speed of the beam of light is same for both A and B. Distance traveled by the beam of light for B is more than distance traveled by same beam of light as seen by A. This is because for B this distance is like a hypotenuse of a right angled triangle and for A it is like vertical height. And we know hypotenuse is longer than the vertical height. Let the hypotenuse be D and let the vertical height be L. Let us assume that TA is the time taken by the beam of light as seen by A to travel 
to train roof and return and TB is the time taken by the same beam of light to traverse the angular path as observed by B. We know that speed is nothing but distance divided by time. So for A speed is 2L by TA and for B speed is 2D by TB. But since these are both the speeds of light as observed by A and B, which are same of course, and since this speed is constant as I already said, therefore 2L by TA is equal to 2D by TB. But since D is greater than L, or in other words the hypotenuse is longer than the vertical height, so TB is also greater than TA. Now that means that the time experienced by B is more than time experienced by A for the same activity of the beam of light, which means that time passing for B is more than the time passing for A. So think about it in a way that maybe a, a time period of one hour for B can be 30 minutes for A. Or you can say B is aging faster than A. Okay. So the person who is inside the train, he is aging slower. For him, one month may be equal to two months for the person who is on the station. So on your next long distance trip, when you meet your twin brother after traveling from North to South Pole in a flight, don't forget to tell him that you are slightly younger than him because you were in motion in the flight. So for you, time passed a little bit slower than your brother who was standing still on the ground. It is really, really very strange how time can be different for two different observers. And it required me too much of analyze, analysis and visualizing this thing in my mind to appreciate this phenomenon. This is also the reason why Einstein is rated so highly because this discovery is not at all intuitive. It is counterintuitive. And the strange phenomenon happening here due to light whose speed cannot change so light is actually the culprit here which makes the space and the time to change and this is the video uh, which tries to explain to you time dilation and also Einstein's special theory of relativity. I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, do hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you.